and welcome to the Pip and Pin podcast. My name is Megan Nodecker and I'm a knitwear designer from Abbotsford, British Columbia, Canada. Um, welcome. <laughs> welcome to the episode. Um, thank you for everyone that's returning and um, thank you for joining me if you're new. Today is February the 13th. It's Friday the 13th <laughs> and it's episode 51. Um, yeah, today I'm going to talk about a couple finished objects that I have, uh, work in progress and some stash acquisitions that I got in Portland. And I'll also talk a little bit more about Portland later. <laughs> the first thing I want to talk about is, um, just get some knit along stuff, um, information out there. We have one knit along going on right now in our Ravelry group, which is the Pippin Pin group. Um, I forgot to say, you can also find me on Instagram as Pippin Pin and on Ravelry as Knit Pippin Pin. Anyways, in the Pippin Pin group, um, we are running a knit along called Fix It or Forget It. Basically, it's about um, fixing the things on the knits um, like your finished objects. So if you have a sweater that you really love, but you wanted to change something to, on the neckline or you bound off too tightly or there's a hole in it and you need to darn it or anything along those kinds of lines, um, that's what this knit along is all about. So you can find all the information um, in the Ravelry group. There's also a little video. I'll pop a link up there um, if you want to see more about it. This one is still going on until the end of March, which is plenty of time. Most of these things, um, some fixes take a while, but some things take only a couple minutes. Um, and this is just to inspire you to pick up those things and do them. Um, I feel like I've been pretty good about this one. I've gotten some of the things done that I've wanted to do. Um, on my list still, I really have to redo the bottom of Justin's orange sweater. It keeps curling up and I need, just need to fix it. <laughs> I really just, I really just need to fix it. Um, and then I also have my Cat Bells sweater and I would like the, the bind off along the bottom to be looser. Um, cause I think I'll wear it more. So I might do that as well hopefully hopefully i can get those i can totally get those two things done um yeah so far for this one i've fixed some i did some darning on one of justin's sweaters and i frogged him out pleasant because you can also frog things some things can't be saved <laughs> or you love them but they just don't get worn so why keep it around you might as well just um use the yarn for something else <laughs> Um, also a little bit of information about the Indie Mini Sock Swap. Um, this is something that I've been, I've done twice before. So this will be the third installment, um, spring 2020 Indie Mini Sock Swap. Basically the premise is you trade in a skein of sock yarn for a set of five mini skeins. So if you have a skein of yarn that uh, maybe you ordered it online and it wasn't quite the color you were hoping for or you kind of bought it on a whim um, and just it's been sitting in your stash for a while or maybe you bought it for another project and that didn't work out or or you just you know fell out of love with with the color there's many reasons um, to not love your sock yarn <laughs> and this is just an opportunity you can send it in to me um, I wind them up into mini skeins in previous um, previous ones, I did them into like little cakes. This year, I'm actually gonna make be making them into mini skeins. Um, my ball winder is horrendously loud, <laughs> and um, I actually would have to wind them twice. So I would have to wind it into a cake and then wind that cake into the twenty little ones. Um, very labor intensive, very disrupting to my family because my workspace is my living room. Um, so I took a little extra time in between ones just to figure out a new way of doing it. And I think um, I got an Amish Swift and I have my Umbrella Swift. So I think using the combo of those two to make mini skeins is gonna be the way to go. Um, it'll also make shipping a lot easier for me. 
So that's what we're going to do this year. Um, all the information is on our website. I'll put a link to it down below. Um, it's pippinpin.ca slash swap. Um, and registration for that opens on March 17th. And I'm going to have it open from the 17th until the 26th or until spots run out. Um, it is just me doing it. So um, I think I will do a little, I'll have a, a little more spots open um, than I did last time, but probably not much more. <laughs> and it did sell out. So if you um, really want to be a part of this, just sign up for our newsletter. I'll put a link to it down below. And I'll be sending out an email um, when registrations open. Um, yeah. So that's starting soon. That's always really exciting. I love, I love doing the, the swaps. Um, it's so fun to just see all the different yarns that people send in. <laughs> it's very exciting. And I really like making the sets. Like making the sets is probably my favorite part. And you get to like, when you, when you register, you can also like sign up for, um, like you get to not choose your colors or, or anything like that. It's going to be a complete mystery what you get, but you can choose like your tones. Um, so like cool or warm or jewel or pastel, or if there's something you really don't like, there's a place to note that. Or if there's a com color combo that you really love, you know, you can write that down and I will try my best to, uh, to accommodate. Cause that's just part of the fun of it for me. Yeah. So that's going to open on March 17th. Make sure you sign up for a newsletter if you are interested because, um, it has sold out every time. <laughs> and that's it for kind of shoppy, shoppy things. <laughs> I have some finished objects. And I, as I said, I went down to Portland. Um, and I did drive a little bit, probably not as much as I could have. Um, but I did get a lot of knitting done. <laughs> so I brought with me, I only brought two projects down with me. I always have this problem when I go on a trip, especially a knitting trip, that I bring everything um, and don't actually get to knit on any of it. <laughs> I mean, I knew I'd get lots of knitting time on the drives, um, but I didn't overpack. I think I packed the appropriate number of things. So I had two whips that I brought and then an emergency skein of yarn for a pair of socks in case I finished things, which I didn't, um, didn't crack into. So just in case, I'm like, also I'm going to 10 yarn stores. <laughs> if I need yarn, I can find a project to cast on. Anyways, um, so I finished, I finished something. This is my Coffee Talk socks. The, this is a pattern by Tracy Miller of the Grocery Girls. Um, I really love this pattern and they fit really well <laughs> because of the texture, um, this little texture panel on the top here, they just kind of like hug, they just hug to your foot and um, that's really, really lovely. Also the little faded toe. Um, these ones are made with uh, flock fiber take a hike sock and this was a Christmas mini skein set. I haven't blocked it. Like I haven't, they're on blockers, but I haven't actually blocked them. So they're doing funny things. But, um, and this is all I want for Christmas is you and evergreen was the mini skein. And that was a little Christmas set I got a couple years ago, um, with this pattern in mind. So I'm very happy that these are finally finished. I probably won't put these ones into my sock drawer because they're going to be Christmas socks. So I'm just going to save them until next year. Um, I did do a whole 12 months of socks last year and put them in a box and saved them. Um, I'm not doing that again this year, but it was really nice to have a couple brand new pairs of socks. Well, 12 brand new pairs of socks at the beginning of the year. That was pretty awesome. Um, yeah, so I highly recommend this pattern if you haven't seen it already. Very well written. Um, I can't remember what kind of heel she has in there. Might be a heel flap and gusset. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I did a fish lips kiss heel because that's that's just what I like to do. Yeah, so those will be on my feet. <laughs> so 
finished object number two is another pair of socks. <laughs> and these are a pair of Afterthought Everything socks. That's a, um, a tutorial I did on YouTube. So I'll put a link to it up below here, up below. <laughs> I'll put a link up here and below um, to that video if you wanna check them out. Um, yeah, so basically, the premise of Afterthought Everything Socks is to knit a tube and then do cut in heels, toes, and cuffs. Um, so I've used here um, some tiny human knits, and this is Scrappy Socks in the Woods is the colorway. And then for the heels and toes and cuffs, I've used Red Fox Fibers Wild Sock in the Grizzly colorway, which is probably my all-time favorite color right now. Um, yeah, I'm very excited. These just flew right off my needles. Um, I, the reason why I did Afterthought Everything, I don't particularly love doing Afterthought Heels and Toes and Cuffs, but the reason why I wanted to do them for this particular pair is because, um, this yarn comes in 50 gram skeins, and I think that is awesome. I only need 50 grams of yarn to make a pair of socks. Um, I just wanted to, I wanted to plan out my stripes because <laughs> it is such a long sequence. Um, I think it's like 12 stripes or something like that. I didn't think there was going to be like enough to make two matching pairs, which is fine, but I also didn't want it to be like one or two stripes off and then just look like it was a mistake. So I definitely planned, like I just knit the whole tube and then I kind of planned out where I wanted everything to be to be cut in. And I'm glad that I did that. I'm really happy with, with how they turned out. Um, I think they fit quite well. Again, I didn't, I didn't block these either. I just finished them. Um, both these pairs of socks just the other day, so I, I haven't blocked them yet. I probably won't. These ones are probably just going to go on my feet. <laughs> um, yeah, and that's about it. I've talked about these a couple times already, so there's not really much more to say about them. They're vanilla socks, afterthought everythings. Um, really awesome self-striping yarns. <laughs> self-striping yarns just like knit themselves pretty much, I'm pretty sure. I don't even remember knitting them. I think I cast it on because I was going to a movie with Georgia and I needed something to like just be stuck in it. And I don't have any pair, any socks on the needles right now, um, which is very strange for me. Usually when I finish a pair of socks, I like cast on another one immediately, but I don't have that desire right now because I have a couple of other little littler things that I'm working on and planning and they're simple enough that they can be like a sock substitute. And I also, I have so many pairs of socks right now. <laughs> like I really do. I don't believe that I need any more socks at the moment. So I feel like my sock knitting st streak is, is starting to slow down a little bit, which is fine. That just leaves lots more room to knit other things. Um, and I really, I have a couple of whips to show you, um, I think I shared, oh yeah, I did, because I put a marker in it. I put a little progress keeper. Um, <laughs> this is a triangular shawl that I am working on, and I've put in a lot of work since you last saw it. This little guy is where I was last time. And this is where I've gotten to. So this actually used to be a color work cowl that I decided wasn't right. Um, so I took it apart and I've now made it into this and I'm really happy with my choice to do that I'm so much happier with this than I was with the other thing and I think once it's off the needles and blocked I'm just really gonna love it. There's this section here with these um, like chevroni things that is basically like slip stitches on stockinette and I'm totally in love with the fabric that it created and just the effect um, that it's done here. Just the little like subtle texture and the ideas that this has been giving me. I'm very excited about. <laughs> I'm very, very excited about them. Um, I'm just about done actually. I'm working on the border now, just a garter stitch border. Um, maybe a couple more rows and then I'm gonna bind off and block the bejesus out of it and maybe add some tassels some pink tassels to it. 
Picasso's never hurt anybody. <laughs> Looks a little funny because my Addy cords are all twisty, but I, it has been on like just a short cord. Um, so I figured I'd put it on a couple longer ones so you can actually <laughs> see what it's doing. <laughs> Oh, and the yarns that I'm using for this, if I didn't mention it before, um, is Union Fiber Union DK. This is some yarn I picked up at Knit City last year. Um, this kind of pinky peachy one is Venice Peach. This beautiful brown is Corrode, and then the black is Misunderstood. And the black I find does leave, like I find this a lot with, with um, hand dyed black yarns, is as I'm knitting with it, you can kind of see like, it's rubbing off on me a little bit. You might not be able to see it. I've been washing my hands a lot, <laughs> so you might not be able to see it. But it, it does transfer some of the color to me, but I kind of expect that from a black hand-dyed yarn. Like I wouldn't expect it from colors or anything, but black needs a lot of dye and I get that. So that doesn't bother me at all. Um, what else am I working on? Oh yes, I've started a new pattern and a new thing, and this is living in one of my Lone Larch bags. I really love this one because it has the little gold, little goldy bits. Um, because with the sock swap, last time I did, I included a pattern um, for the swap as well. And that went over really well. <laughs> and it was really fun to design um, specifically for mini skeins and specifically like for this for this thing. So also, if you participate in the um, in the swap, you'll get a copy of this pattern. And I'm gonna show you a little bit, and then that's all you will see until its release, probably at the end of April but this is it so far. <laughs> um, the pattern is gonna be a hat, that much I will tell you. Other than that, it's gonna be a surprise. Um, it starts with some two by two ribbing. <laughs> so the band is, or the, what would you call that? Brim. <laughs> the brim, the brim of the hat is now done and it's in this beautiful like pastel, not pastel, um, kind of moody pink. Um, and this is from Autumn and Indigo from a mini skein set that I got from her. And yeah, I'm very excited to have this thing. <laughs> I'm also going to, I'll show you um, kind of the other colors I have picked out. I just got them organized in Ziplocs. <laughs> so I'm thinking with this one, I'm also going to be using these guys. So I think this is kind of gonna be my palette of mini skeins. And then I'm also gonna do, um, I'm gonna make a couple adult sizes and then a couple kid sizes because hats for kids are cute and easy and fun. Um, and so I have a second palette as well. And these ones are all different, but more pastel. And then with this kind of pop of beautiful, like vibrant coral. And this one I'm gonna make for Georgia. And she wants me to use this in there also because she thinks it looks like cookies and cream. <laughs> but I don't know what color, like, she doesn't like the orange, but I <laughs> really like the orange. So I think I might, I don't know, take something out and switch it or not. I, I told her I might, I might take it in, but I might not. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, but yeah, so I'm excited to work on those. Those are gonna be my, my sock substitutes, I think, but you won't see uh, much progress on those. <laughs> so I'll have to start something else too, I guess. Those back in there. And that's it for knitting stuff. Not, well, actually a whole heck of a lot. I finished two pairs of socks and nearly a shawl. That is 
quite a bit. Um, I also have some swatching that I've been doing for some new projects and stuff, but I'll talk about those once they actually get started. Yeah. I did get some stash. <laughs> some of it came in the mail, some of it I got in Portland. Um, so I'm going to start with this. This is a set of interchangeable needles. <laughs> this is the Chowgu Twist Red Lace Mini Interchangeables. Um, I got the five inch tips because that's what works best in my hands. And I've used them for the past couple days and I really like them. I'm very used to the Addy Clicks. Um, so twisting them on and like using the tightener thing is a bit of an adjustment, but it's not, you know, it's not super crazy. It's not like it's hard to do or anything. I really like, um, how tiny they are. So this is the set that comes into 1.5 millimeter to 2.5 millimeter. Um, and those are the, like I just really wanted an interchangeable set that was smaller. My Addies only go to like a US 4, which is, let's see if I can, US 4 is like 3.3. 3.5, 3 millimeter. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not very good at my conversions. Um, but anyways, yeah. So the smallest size is US 4, um, which is great, except I want other sizes too. And I'm sick of buying um, fixed sizes because they're expensive. And um, I just don't like having them. <laughs> I'm, I'm not very organized, so I'd rather just have like my set, and then I have my Addies, and then I also um, I also got the um, the Chowgu Twist Red Lace small set, um, which comes. Yeah, I don't I, I don't actually know what sizes come in that one, but I know they have like the two and the three, um, which are sizes that I need. So I'm just waiting for those to come, and then I'll have. Um, of everything and I can't remember where I heard it but somewhere I had said like Addies are great I really like I have the lace ones and regular ones the lace ones were a gift and I really like the the tips um I don't need super sharp super sharp needles so the lace tips are fine for me I really like the the way they connect I've never had a problem with them unconnecting or anything like that and as of right now, I feel like the Chowgu's, I just don't feel as secure because they do just twist on and off, but you can tell, like as you're knitting with them, you can see that it's coming on or your yarn catches and you can kind of feel it. So I'm not too worried about them. Um, I mean, if it was a really big problem, then they just wouldn't exist. So, <laughs> but I'm really having fun with those. I'm really excited to have um, to just have an interchangeable set of smaller size needles. I also bought some stuff in Portland. <laughs> now I'm not going to talk too much about Portland, um, because like I'm going to show everything that I got in Portland, but I'm not going to talk too, too much about the trip because, um, I, we did do Sam and I, the, the friend I went with, she hosts the Hand Me My Knitting podcast. Um, and we actually did a live video while we were there. So on Sunday morning, after we'd been to all the yarn stores and done all our stuff, uh, before we checked out of the hotel, we did a live video together, which was a lot of fun. And we did talk about our trip then. So if you are really interested to hear about Portland and to meet somebody new, maybe if you never watched Sam's podcast before, um, just watch that video. <laughs> it's the live one. Um, you will see it. It's the one I just uploaded last week. Um, so then we talk about, we talk more about Portland and the things that we did and the people that we met. Um, there were some people that we met that I was really excited about meeting and I didn't expect to see there, which was really cool. Um, and then there were a couple of people that I knew were coming, um, but our paths just, just didn't cross. Um, like, you know, Max, it was Max the Knitter. We tried to connect a couple times and I think one time we missed each other by like 10 minutes. 
and I know Rachel from six and seven was there we just didn't like that's the thing it's a yarn crawl there's 10 different stores it's a big city um we also didn't want to like over plan our trip so I didn't we didn't really like want to have to make plans and stick to them um so we just kind of were yes if we see people awesome if we don't maybe next time <laughs> So anyways, um, yeah, if you really want to hear more about Portland and our trip in general, um, you can watch our previous video. I also want to say that I feel so lucky um, that we did actually get to go because of how things are going right now with the coronavirus and uh, travel and um, all those things at, in BC we just got word that if you leave the country and come back um you are supposed to self-quarantine for two weeks um that wasn't in place when i left um and now i've heard that um, a lot of the yarn festivals and things it pretty much across north america are cancelled um so that's Knit City Montreal is postponed to the summer. I know Vogue Knitting Live in Seattle. Um, Fibers West, which was a um, supposed to be happening this weekend, is canceled. And that one, um, that one I really feel for the vendors because they were there setting up and some people had finished setting up and um, then they got word that uh, BC Health has uh, you're not allowed to have events that are bigger than 250 people. So they had to shut it down and pack up all their stuff and go home. Like that's, that's heartbreaking. Um, and <laughs> I really feel for the vendors that were there. I couldn't imagine, honestly, for us, uh, Knit City Vancouver is, uh, is our biggest source of revenue and it is our biggest thing that we do um and i really feel for for the people that um don't can't do that right now um so there's <laughs> sorry there's lots of places um if if there was an event that you were planning to go to i would highly recommend going to um going to the vendors websites and checking it out i know for me when i go to a show i have a budget um, of what I can do and maybe like still spend your budget I don't know support support some of these vendors that like they've lost a lot um, these shows and events are for the teachers and the vendors and the dyers and the designers like they're they're um, it's how we make our living and um, it's pretty pretty awful but um, that none of it's happening. I mean, it's all for good reason, um, but it doesn't make it any easier. So with that out of the way, <laughs> I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I got in Portland. <laughs> um, we did get a chance to go to all 10 yarn stores and I am really terrible at names of things and places. Um, so I'm not going to attempt to figure out what came from what yarn store. I think if you watch the Portland video, um, I do share a little bit more about where things came from because I had Sam there to tell me where we were and what we were doing. <laughs> so if, um, if you really wanna know where something was from, watch the previous video. But I mean, it's all, it's all stuff you can get around. <laughs> So we, um, one thing that I really thought was super cool that the yarn crawl did is at every store they had pins. So every store had their own little pin made up and, um, you would go sign in and get your, get your pin. So I have all my little pins and they had a tote bag too that, um, that you could get to put all your pins on, but I... <laughs> really don't need any more tote bags so I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do with all these yet I might just keep them and 
think they're cool. Or find a, some fabric or put it in like an embroidery hoop or something. I'll do something cute with them, I'm, I'm sure. Um, oh, and then we got our, our finisher pin. So that's one that you got for getting to all 10 of them. So that was really cute. Um, I ha I'm not gonna show them all, but there they are, our little pins. Do something, something with them sometime. <laughs> Another uh, pin that I got was from Starlight, and I know it was from Starlight because it says Starlight Knitting Society on it. <laughs> uh, I'm not a huge like enamel pin person, but I do have a couple. I have this one that's been on my sock bag forever. It's the Amy Reese one. Um, I mean, Risu, right? And then I got it in It City last year, and this one will probably go on my bag as well. I just really love Starlight's branding and all of their stuff. So, oh, and we got, um, they had stickers there too. So I picked up a sticker. Okay. Maybe Georgia can, Georgia can use that one. She loves rainbows. Um, one of the yarn stores also had uh, a guy there selling tea, which I thought was brilliant um, because all of the yarn stores through the whole weekend, I think the event was four days. It was Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We were just there. We did all of them in Friday and Saturday, um, but every day the yarn stores would have different people in and doing trunk shows and lots of places had like multiple people doing multiple trunk shows at the same time. So one of them had um, tea guy making tea from Deluxe. Um, so I definitely bought some tea. What a great idea for a yarn crawl um, because knitters love tea. <laughs> and it's something a little different. Like when you're looking at yarn and things and stuff all day, it's nice to have a little break and like look at something else. Something else cool that, um, that he does is he has like a tea club. So you can go to Plum Deluxe dot com slash tea. I'll put a link to it down below and um, join his monthly tea subscription. And I think it's $10 a month and free shipping. And I asked him about um, Canadian shipping too. And he said, oh yeah, like Canadian, Canadian shipping. And that's great. So I might, I might do that. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but the yarn is what you actually want to see, I'm sure. Um, so this is something that I got somewhere. <laughs> it's a little mini skein um, for Georgia's collection of mini skeins, but I might keep this one for myself. I haven't really told her that it was for her yet. <laughs> Maybe when she starts knitting, I'll, I'll give it to her. But this is um, from House of La Mode. And just a really cute little pink speckly, colorful gray base yarn. Um, I also, from the same place that I picked that up, I got some Cedar House yarns. Um, and this is her Irish Yearling DK. I've used this yarn before. Um, and this is the Cervidate colorway. And it's kind of this like mauvey, purpley, throwing up, oh, there we go. That's a little more true. And of course it has her tweed. And I've used her tweed um, for a cowl before and I really love it. Um, and I have an idea for a sweater, but I just, I really wanted a skein of it to play around with and, um, swatch and stuff with. So I got one because <laughs> I really love it. And yeah, I just really love this color. Um, I had a couple rules when I was shopping because sometimes without rules, I can go a little crazy. And um, I have, I just went through all my yarn and um, I realized that I have lots of yarn for projects and I have projects that I wanna make for myself and I have designing projects that I wanna do. So I'm like, I don't need any more sweater quantities. Like I have enough, I have two sweater quantities of yarn and I really want the sweaters. And if I buy more sweater yarn, um, then those ones won't get done or that sweater won't get done. You know what I mean? So I just didn't buy any sweater yarn <laughs> this round. Um, which isn't to say that I didn't allow myself any yarn. I also didn't want any sock yarn because I have lots of sock yarn um, and lots of beautiful sock yarn that I want to use. So I said no sock yarn, no sweater quantities. 
Um, but I was looking for some single skeins of like DK or worsted, um, which sounds like something nobody would need, but <laughs> but I do because I, I just wanted a couple options for if I wanted to knit somebody a hat or if I wanted to knit myself a hat um, or see a nice like pattern or just try something out. Um, then I could just pull from my stash and have it ready to go and I didn't have to go searching for anything. So I just wanted a couple different options um, for things like that. So I got a couple speckles, a couple solids. I think I did pretty good. <laughs> this first one here is from the Mira Me and it is from Merino DK in uh, Air. A Y R E. Um, it's this beautiful kind of like light gray, warm with these very bright speckles, and it just kind of called. It just called to me. <laughs> I don't. I, I with these yarns, I have no idea what they will become, which was the point. <laughs> I didn't want to plan anything, so this will just be in my stash, looking beautiful until it tells me what it wants to be. So probably a hat or a cowl or something. I just really love all the, just all the different speckles that are in there. Like this, this bright green thing is kind of my favorite. And then there's some like pink and some black. Um, very excited about this one. This one is a yarn that I literally picked up some form of this color in every single store we went to. So it's kind of this, again, dark, kind of gray um, with purple and black and some pinks. Um, this is Ren and Ollie um, and it's their Spin DK which is 100% Superwash Merino in the gingerbread colorway which I don't really understand but that's okay. <laughs> but yeah just this kind of dark gray, dark speckles, little bit of color, um, but mostly just a nice dark neutral. It's funny how when you go, I do this at shows all the time too, you'll go into booths or stores and just start picking up the same colors all the time. So I think we were at the last store and um, maybe one of the last ones. And I was like, you know what? I've picked up this color so many times, I just need it. <laughs> and the last two I have here are from the Earl Grey Fiber Company, and I've been a very big stalker on Instagram <laughs> of these yarns because they're beautiful. They um, they were doing a trunk show somewhere, <laughs> and of course I had to pick up this one. This is their Oolong DK base. This is Petty, which is showing up a little redder than it's supposed to, but it's this beautiful goldy, like coppery, orangey, dark, beautiful color. Um, very similar to many things I already have, um, <laughs> but not in this weight and not for this purpose. So I was very excited to, um, to find this one. And then this one just spoke to me right away too. I picked this one up and I just did not, uh, did not put it down. And this is the uh, Fjord colorway. It's this dark, teal, um, very tonal, very lovely. And then this Progress Keeper, you can see it there. Didn't come with it. Sam actually got this um, for me. She got one for herself too. And it's a little wooden Progress Keeper. <laughs> Just wants to dance. Um, and a little owl. Because the theme of um, the theme of the yarn crawl was birds of the Pacific Northwest, and actually Justin saw an owl the other day. That's pretty cool. You don't usually see them, hear them all the time, but I don't usually see them. Um. Oh yeah. Okay. One more thing. We also we were staying in the Pearl District, which is right in downtown Portland, and um, about two blocks away from us was Powell's Books. So we did spend some time there and um, I've been listening to audiobooks a lot lately um, just because I feel like my we just can't handle reading books right now <laughs> maybe when we're camping and you know doing other stuff like during Christmas break I could read 
um, when we're camping I can read, but like on a daily kind of basis thing, I just I always get overwhelmed with like other stuff. And um, so I've started listening to audiobooks. Uh, so I didn't buy any books for myself, but I did buy a book for Justin and for Georgia. And I got a cup for myself. <laughs> Do I need any more cups? Absolutely not. But I'm not allowed to get a cat. So I get cat mugs. <laughs> That's just how it is. Um, so it has just all these different kinds of cats on it. Oh, there's, um, I had a Persian named Boo Boo. And it's the greatest cup in the whole world. I'm very excited to use it. Georgia asked, I guess she saw it. She said, Mom, did you get a new cat cup? And I said, yes, I did. She's like, well, do you think we could share it? <laughs> and I said, yeah. It's just going to be in the cupboard. Like Everyone can use it. You can use the cup. She was very excited about it. <laughs> and that was it. So that's all the stuff that I've got um, I think I did pretty well. I stuck to my guns. There was one skein of sock yarn that I was quite tempted by, but I don't even really remember what it is anymore. So I didn't. Um, and I'm, that's a good thing that I didn't because yeah, I, cause I don't remember what it even was. Um, <laughs> I, I, I liked having a plan. I really liked having some parameters to like work within and, and be like, okay, this is really beautiful. Like there was so much beautiful yarn and so many things that I didn't know about and or I'd never seen in person and it's like oh yeah like when I want to do this project like I'm gonna keep this in mind um which was awesome but I am glad that I stuck to what I said when I went in there thinking I was like yeah I just want a couple skeins of single things they different colors some speckles some tonals like I just wanted a variety of DK or worsted weight yarn. And that's what exactly what I got. And I'm very happy with my purchases and my non-purchases. <laughs> Not that I ever really regret buying things um, when it comes to yarn, but uh, yeah, right now I just feel like I've, I'm at my limit with my stash and I have the things that I wanna knit. So I'm just gonna stick to the things. And I have lots of designing coming up and um, I do get, uh, the majority of the time I do get yarn support for the designs that I do um and I don't have a ton of personal knitting time to begin with so if I keep buying just random yarn for my stuff then my stash never gets any smaller despite how much knitting I do so um yeah I just want to say again I feel really lucky that we got to go and do that before um before this virus got out of hand and um, I really hope that um, that things get better soon and that we can all you know congregate and see each other again and I know there's lots of like uh, there's lots of online things going on so even if you're missing some of your people um, there is still a community and there are still things going on so so definitely check out Instagram and and um, there's lots of there's lots of online events that are going to be happening right now and I, I just really hope that we can all get together and knit and have a marketplace and congregate soon and give each other hugs and stuff <laughs> aside from that I have been watching a lot of um, people on YouTube conmarrying their house <laughs> and doing the Marie Kondo or like Swedish death cleaning stuff. So I've been in like organized mode, which I love. <laughs> I love it. My house is not, my house isn't dirty, but my house is definitely disorganized. And for the amount of space that we have, we absolutely have too much stuff. Um, so I, I'm going through everything and cleaning some stuff up. I made myself a list of like organizing. I'm not going to do the, the Marie Kondo way of doing it um, because I feel like that is very overwhelming. And <laughs> I, I know that it would feel really good to get it all done, but I also don't think that I could get 
Justin on board with doing it that way. Um, which is fine. I'm completely okay with just like yesterday I picked a, um, I picked a cupboard in the kitchen and I was like, okay, I'm just going to do this cupboard. And it was the one that was under the sink. And it's kind of like weird because you have this thing that you open, but beside the oven is all just kind of void space. So like it looks really big. And when we moved in, it was like, oh yeah, we have all this kitchen, like in all this cupboard space, but really I'd say a good quarter of it is pretty well inaccessible because it, it's all just like it's just a, a dead end basically you have this U of space that yes you can put things there but that's where they go to die <laughs> because you forget that they're there they're just in this dark little hole when you open the cupboard you only see the stuff that's right there so um in kind of that back corner there was a lot of um, like picnic stuff. So like platters and um, all of our plastic utensils and our cutlery and like just the thing we take on picnics and stuff, um, which is a good stuff to have. It was just all super disorganized. We had vases and extra bags and cleaning supplies and just lots of stuff. So I got rid of a huge bag of stuff emptied it entirely, cleaned it all out. So everything now is like in bins um, that can be easily accessed. So we have our like tea towels and our towels in one right at the front because obviously we use those. And then off to the side in this part that you can't easily get to, we have our vases and platters and then we a box of um, like a box of our picnic stuff. So if I ever want picnic stuff out, I can just take out the box with the tea towels, easily get the other box. So hopefully it will be um, more functional. And our most of our cupboards in our kitchen are like that, <laughs> which is pretty annoying. So all of our cups and things, I have to go through all of our pots and pans, um, and then a cupboard of really random stuff. <laughs> so it's going to be a process but I'm very excited about it. I'm excited to get lots of stuff out of my house. And when it comes to like throwing things away and getting rid of stuff, I'm pretty ruthless. Um, <laughs> I used to be very sentimental about things and um, am now realizing that things don't really matter all that much. Like they do, you need, you need stuff to live. And I like having little things around me and I like having you know, my yarn and things like that. I'm not a minimalist whatsoever, but um, just things to have things or multiples of things. Like I found three half finished bottles of Windex. It's like, okay, why do I have three of these? And um, let's fix this. And I had like carpet cleaner stuff. We don't have any carpets. We have one area rug. Um, and beside that, we don't, we just don't have carpets. Why do I have carpet cleaner? Nobody knows mystery so all that stuff went away it's very exciting um i really want to do all my clothes next uh i don't think i'll do that today maybe i'll do that today hmm. but yes i do want to get rid of some of my clothes as well because I, I have things that like i've grown out of and the stuff that you put on twice a week and never wear <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll be going through my clothes probably next and just slowly taking away at the kitchen. Um, I think it'll be good. <laughs> Other than that, not much. We have Georgia has her last day of school today and then there's spring break for two weeks. Hopefully she goes back to school after that, but who knows? Um, I know Ontario just did some stuff. I don't want to talk about it, actually. <laughs> I've talked about it a lot with people in my life, and you don't need to hear about that from a knitting podcast. So I'm just going to end it here. <laughs> I hope everyone is happy and safe and has what they need. And um, yeah, happy, happy and safe and good, good to each other. Just be good to each other. It's also a big thing.
be nice. Make sure everyone has toilet paper, right? <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'll be back next week with another episode. Um, Georgia will be here, so maybe maybe she'll come say hi. She's probably grown a lot since the last time you saw her. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, guys. Uh, have a great week. Bye.